All right, cool. So, hang on. I still don't have proper streaming equipment, so I'm using my phone yet again. But today, I'm gonna go over that infamous Brooklyn reflector. I'm gonna bring up your chat over here, so give me like two seconds to bring that up. If you are someone who is watching this not live, I apologize for this part, just double tap forward a little bit. Let me go into this, and let me pop out the chat really fast, and we will do this. So, whoa, let me just shut the sound off on that. I pause on this. All right, cool. So here's the deal. Apple Plus on this so I can see you guys. I might need a, a reflector business to fall back on if a professional photography doesn't work out for me. Nice, real nice. All right. <laughs> so uh, tools of the trade in the, in the studio are whatever can absorb, reflect, block light, right? Um, when we use things like uh, post, uh, poster board, you know, foam core, stuff like this to reflect light, you're not going to see it because I got like a light on me, but um, all it is is 3 sixteenths thick poster board, whatever, foam core, whatever, uh, whatever size you think you're going to want. Um, I th this is a, uh, I'll tell you right now, I always just pick it up. I never really ask what size it is. This is a 30 by 20. Is it really? Yeah, 30 by 20 piece, which is pretty much the most standard size. Now you've seen me and Daniel Norton use these constantly when we go live and all we keep asking, get questions are is, what is that thing? Where can I get it? Have this crazy reflector, because it really works. And it's nothing crazy, it is just foam core, but there's variations of it, right? So, hey, what's up from the UK? What's going on? This is, oh, by the way, I'm in my studio slash Daniel studio here in Chelsea, Manhattan. So uh, it is a bit of a gloomy day out. So I am going to spend a couple of minutes with you guys doing this. We're going to do a couple of variations though. So you guys have seen the white, but here's the, the specular silver, you know? And when we're done with these, I'm going to take them over to Sheila and I'm gonna show you kind of what they look like. Hopefully if this camera doesn't suck, I promise you I am working on getting some better equipment here like a Mevo or some situation like that. But a lot of people ask me like, how do I get them to be silver? She's the best model, Sheila's the best. What's going on Dave, how you been man? Um, actually, if you haven't watched it, check out Dave Bruska's channel. He just did one video that's only two minutes long about a weird noise and it was one of the best two minutes of my life. So. Go check out Dave Bruska's channel when you get a chance. So Daniel Norton will have you believe that you can just go out and you can buy the white bounce and then get the negative fill for absorption to create some denser shadows to make harder lines on your subject. Really good if you're shooting glassware, put it on both sides of your glass. Um, so this is right off the bat store-bought, right? Like here's, this is the complete Elmer's friggin' barcode, right? But on the other side is the black. What I'm going to tell you to do is, if you buy enough of it or you buy different sizes of it, a really cool thing you can do with this uh, that seems like common sense, but I don't see a lot of common sense out there sometimes, is you can measure it down for 30 inches. So at the 15 inch mark, actually we'll do it with this blade. At the 15 inch mark, I'll make a notch, right? And at the 15 inch mark down here, I'll make another notch. And what I'm doing is, is if I were to use this more for tabletop style shooting, like uh, products or jewelry, or I mean, which is pretty much a product anyway, I'm gonna score it. I'm gonna score it again just for good measure. You're not cutting all the way through, but what happens is you can do this, and now I got little V-flats for whatever type of shoot I'm doing, right? So you can score them either way you want. I usually do it this way so when I store them, they don't mess up the white part, but pretty much like that. Or if you want them to go both ways, obviously you could score it again tape them on both sides like an actual V-flat and they could flip both ways. But this is a really fast way to 
just get yourself a V-flat in there really fast, um, which is really good if you want a white background on a small tabletop. Put your light in here towards your white wall. This is your flag, and you're good. You're done. You're ready to go. So that's a really quick little V-flat type Brooklyn reflector type setup. But I know what you guys really want to know is, how do I make them silver? Um, if you don't have a uh, ability to get the black, by the way, I just want you to know that you can spray paint them black. I recommend this 94 spray paint. It is one of the maddest black paints out there. It doesn't have a high VOC count, meaning it doesn't smell too crazy. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of solvents in it, and it's very high opacity. So you can actually get a can of this to last you forever. It is uh, a Spanish graffiti company type paint. So um, I have a ton of it, but... This is as mad as it gets, 94, I really recommend it. And remember to spray it even, but if, you, but if not, you can always get foam core that's black on both sides. They also have foam core that is black on the inside of the foam, so if you really want it to be all blacked out, it could be. Uh, like, for example, if you wanted this to be the black background of a shop, but you didn't want some seams showing, they actually make it with a black foam on the inside, allowing for that. So that's a quick V-flat for tabletop. Ooh, I'm all warpy. This is where we start getting a little tricky. So, I will take a fresh piece of foam core, right? And I have the white side, and then what if I want to have that silver specular bounce, right? Well, I can do that pretty easily. Uh, I would do it with a spray glue. I recommend 3M Super 77. It is one of the best formulas ever. It's been around forever. It keeps things stuck. Stay away from anything that's repositionable or temporary. Um, stay away from the Elmer stuff because that's, you can literally rip that off once you're done with the adhesion, which is pretty good for like stencil. If you want to glue something down, cut it and peel that uh, template off, it's good for that. But we don't want that. We want this uh, foil to stay down, right? So I went and got the cheapest in aluminum foil. Uh, keep in mind, the cheaper you go, the thinner the gauge, the thinner the gauge, the easier it, the easier it rips. So if you're not used to uh, squeegeeing down and making uh, a foil flat, uh, just get yourself a thicker gauge. You'll have an easier time because once it starts ripping, it's a pain in the balls. Um, we're going to do the smooth version first. You can also, can you say the name of the glue again? Sure. That is 3M brand. Super 77, I know it's backwards, I apologize. It's because I'm using a phone, but it's 3M Super 77. Be careful with this, be careful with this. It's no joke. Uh, there is a version that's stronger than this. Um, I'm not even gonna tell you what that is because it's caused a lot of problems over the years. Also, the key to this will also be, it's not backwards on your end, oh, it's backwards on my end. Oh, okay, well that's cool. I'm glad it's not backwards. Um, Keep the tip clean. If you have an old can of spray glue, take that tip off and put a new cap on because if it spits, you're gonna get uneven dispersion and weird thick deposits all over the board and there, then it won't be so uh, clean and, and uh, smooth. And the key to this is we want like glass on this, right? So um, make sure this is clean. After every time you spray with it, turn it upside down and spray it outside, get it out. Spray it till nothing but the, uh, the gas comes out of it, okay? Uh, keeps the, the sputtering to a minimum. So let's get into this. First of all, if you didn't know this, which I found out a lot of people don't know this, when you buy foil and you punch in the sides, when you punch in the sides, that's what keeps the roll in there so it just spins on that so it doesn't come flying out every time. So do yourself a favor, when you get a roll, pop in the inside to keep the roll in there, okay? Uh, wish I could do that with the wife. Ooh, that's rough, Cord. That's rough. So I'm going to pull out a piece as smooth as I can because I don't want any dents, you know. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than the size of my board, and I'm going to take a rip. Oh, this is the opposite rip one. So now I have, I have an option here. I got this super smooth specular side, or I have this really smooth, less specular side. So this is more of a dull, soft silver, as we would call it. Um, a lot of people like the soft silver. I'm a fan of soft silver, but here's the thing. I can never make this more specular. This, over time, will get fingerprints on it and become less specular and be more of a soft silver or a hybrid in between. So I usually just stick with 
the more shiny, glassy mirror side up as opposed to the softer, more matte finish on the other side. All right, so I'm gonna line up and just make sure I'm pretty good to go here. What I'm going to do now is flip it to the side that I wanna glue. So this is the, the soft silver side that I'm gonna glue down. Does this remind of Sham Wow infomercial? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm selling these like crazy and I don't have a criminal record that bad like that guy did, so no Sham Wow bullshit here, okay? You can tape a quarter diff on pure silver. You can, so Dave Rusk is saying I can put a, a quarter diffusion gel on top of the specular side and make it uh, more, more matte if I wanted to. Always, that's a good trick too. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see how much space I need for the width. You know, in an ideal world, we'd have the exact size foil for the exact size board, but you're never really gonna find that unless you buy the longer rolls of, wider rolls of aluminum foil. I'm gonna shift this. So since, since this is actually more than half the board, I don't wanna go to half the board on the other side. I'm gonna hang this off a decent amount, right? Now I'm gonna take the glue, I'm gonna shake it, make sure it has even dispersion. That's really key, you do not want this thing spitting and shaking it will help you keep it fluid, okay? Also, another thing that a lot of people don't seem to know is when you have a spray can with a dot on it right there, you line the dot up to the dot and that by the manufacturer standards is the way the valve system works to make it at optimal positioning, believe it or not. Also, a lot of spray glue, believe it or not, doesn't work so great straight down. You kind of want to do one of these a little bit. So let's get some tackiness here. Now the key to this is gluing both sides and then giving them a few seconds to tack up. You don't want to glue one side and just go for it. And you don't want to glue both sides and just go for it while they're super wet. You want to give it some tack. You want it to like grip and marry themselves to each other. All right, let's see what we got here. Now, I'll pay attention to how I spray this because this is how you get even dis uh, distribution of the glue. I'm gonna move this up a little bit. I have plastic on my table. Uh, do not do this anywhere that you don't want overspray because this stuff gets everywhere. I'm sure I'll get it on that laptop. It will get on my glasses and I will hate my life, but I'm doing this for you. I'm on the edge of my seat. Oh, Dave Bruska, you must be bored today, Dave. Dave, why don't you come by the studio? I'm here, man, come chill out, come hang out. All right, so let's do this. I'm watching my overlap lines on this and I'm keeping it thin. You don't want to have thick glue. And now I'm going to do the same for my foil. And I'm just going to let this hang for a second and let it dry a little bit, get that tack going, you know? I'm going to just overhang this a little bit. Okay, so now here's where it starts getting tricky, right? You could glue either way you want. I don't care if you do it on the board or on a separate, whatever, it doesn't matter. You just don't wanna have something stuck to something else, you know? Uh, usually I would glue the aluminum foil, move it up and then glue the, uh, the board, but sometimes you get overspray and it sticks to that, so watch yourself with that. Yeah, I should be wearing a mask. Don't do this like this, kids, I apologize. My mask is back in Brooklyn, I'm in Chelsea right now. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fold this a few inches like that, right? I'm gonna hold it so that I square it up. And I'm gonna press down a little bit with my fingers. Watch this go to hell now that I'm doing it live for the first time. I'm just gonna make sure that this one is as flat and even as I can with just my thumb. And I'm gonna take a squeegee, but you could use a credit card or you know a library card, whatever you want. If they, people still have a library card, I don't know. But I use squeegees because they have this pivot point which allows for more fluid motion. And also I shave down the corners so that I don't have a rip point. And normally I would 
put a weight down or clamp this or something. I'm an idiot right now because I didn't put any weight on this. So it's gonna shift on me like crazy, but you guys can put a weight down on it. And I'm not letting the foil go down. I'm letting the squeegee put the foil down. I know, I'm sorry I'm being so quiet, but I'm really watching this. I'm trying to keep it as mirror-like as possible. I'm not ignoring you guys, I promise. And now for the final bit, I just go straight and I'll just squeegee the death out of this thing now. I'll just go crazy with it. Now for the edges, you wanna take the edge of your squeegee, put it down like this and run it. And what that does, it gives you a sharper edge so when you're cutting it, um, you'll get a clean even line. You don't need to use a ruler or something stupid like that. You know. So I'm just gonna, it's basically the same, um, the same method of, of uh, grip tape and a skateboard, pretty much. I did mess up here because I'm a schmuck. I did go uneven. I didn't keep it even. If I wanted to, I could have played it safe and kept it off the, the board a little more. I don't really care at this point. One, quarter, one eighth of an inch isn't going to change my light, so I'm fine with that. So let's finish this board off. Get another piece. Right, so that's my soft silver side. That's where I'm gonna spray, right? And if you notice, I'm leaving about a quarter inch of the old foil underneath, and that's where I'm gonna spray my board. So I can leave this, where to put my glue now. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna spray the foil. It's gonna give overspray to the board. Then I'm gonna spray the board, let them sit for a second, they'll both get tacky, and do the same thing I just did. So let's spray this, even. Spray pattern, the overspray goes onto this board, which is cool. Give it a second, check it, make sure you have even distro, and that should be good. Now I'm gonna spin this around so that this is closer to me. I'm gonna fold this again like I did the first one. And this time, I'm gonna make sure to overlap a little bit. You can actually see the spray line if you did this correctly. So you can actually see where you want it to, to adhere down to. I'm sorry for all the noise in my microphone. I'm gonna get a better fold on this actually. I know, this is the most dynamic demo I've ever done. I know guys, I know, I know. And I'm gonna start pressing it down. And I have my squeegee right here and I'm gonna just get myself started. And I'm gonna just relax this foil down. Again, if I was smart, I would have put some sort of weight on this freaking thing so it doesn't shift so much, causing me to look like an asshole on live stream, but who doesn't ever look like an asshole on live stream, huh? The king of being an asshole on live stream is Daniel Norn, right? Uh, I'm just kidding, Dan, I love you. And we're good. So I'm gonna take this pseudo weight off, right? And I'm just gonna squeegee the life out of this thing. This isn't the most perfect one I've ever done. I could see some imperfection over here and that's because of the shifting, I didn't weigh it down. Where's your angriness gone? Don't worry, I'm angry right now. I just fucked up this whole thing live, it's great. Meanwhile, before you guys show up, I did a perfect one. I did like this perfect one over here. All right, so, whoops. So now, finally, we're gonna finish this thing off. I'm gonna squeegee down the edges so that I can see the actual board. And I'm gonna take a blade. Do I have my blade? 
I'm gonna take a really sharp blade. This is a, happens to be a 60 XT scalpel. I carry it with me all the time. This is an autopsy blade. You don't need something as crazy as this. An X-Acto knife will do just fine. And I'm just going to pierce through and lean my knife into the edge of the, of the poster board, the foam core, whatever you want to call it. And whenever it gets stuck, don't rip. Just saw a little bit and it'll start breaking through, okay? And you can see that it's like super clean. Right to the edge. And there you go, you have a silver and white reflector now. It's like a mirror. Okay, so this stuff is all sticky and icky. But I said there was gonna be more than this, right? Can you link this knife? Uh, I could, I guess. I'm not sure if they make it anymore. It's called the Havanta, the Havana Paranta. Um, there's plenty of knives that take scalpel blades. Okay, so we're not done yet though. We're not done yet, okay? So what do we just figure out, right? We have the white, we have the silver specular. We also have our negative fill board or V-flat, right? So right now, we've look at this. And this, what did this cost me? A total of $5 so far, maybe like, maybe six bucks. I will say all foam core is not created equal. Sometimes when you go to a cheap dollar store like we have in Brooklyn, uh, it's not paper finished. It's just a thicker version of what the foam on the inside is, and that doesn't bounce as easy. So be careful of that. Um, also, you got to realize all you're doing here is making a board that has rigidity, right? Like something I could physically hold out. So if that's the case, I could use this to make backdrops. So I, I love this kind of stuff. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Before we do the backdrop thing, I got one more finish to show you. I'm going to pull up, did I put that, did I throw that board away? Is that what just happened? Oh no. We're going to make soft silver. So soft silver is a finish that came out uh, within the last few years. It is just bands of silver in between the bands of white. You have two options at this. Uh, it's it's kind of like for the in-between of, you want that little bit of snap. It's good for a catch light, a little easier on the actual bounce so that if you want that soft bounce on them, but that snap in the eyes, it's there. Uh, it is not the most like um, reliable form of, reliable form of a uh, bounce. So I'd say like white is a go-to, it's a given. Silver, as long as you can figure out the actual exact angle, it's a given. This, it's kind of all over the place, but it's pretty cool. Some people love it. I use it sometimes, so I figured I'd show you guys how to use it. So two options with this, right? Uh, you carry a scalpel all the time, that's gangster. Not only do I carry a scalpel, but this, this is my money clip. So don't, don't fuck with me. No, I was kidding. <laughs> all right. You have two options to do this style. One, take um, a paper, like, a, uh, like a, a paper tape that has very low tack. And, uh, or if they don't have low tack, take, the, take masking tape, put it on your clothes, work it in really good, then peel it off, and then lay it down on the board in one-inch increments. Spray, um, chrome spray paint and peel it off and you, sh you have something of a finish, but chrome spray paint does dull out as it's worn. Or you could do the, uh, the same thing, put the masking tape on your, on your clothes to dull it a little bit with the lint, put it down in one inch increments, and then do spray glue, which I should actually clear out the, I'm clearing out the nozzle to keep it good. Or you could, you could lay down those one inch increments of low tack masking tape after you fill, you know, get it stuck with a bunch of fuzz. And then you can spray down the glue and then lay the foil over just like we did here and then carefully peel up the tape and it should rip the aluminum foil in a way that will allow you to uh, get a clean line. If not, you have to babysit with a knife. It's a pain in the ass. So this is the, this is the one I recommend you do. You can go to uh, uh, any art store, or you could even go to a, uh, 
like a like a hardware store and go to the air ducts uh, area? Why not use aluminum tape? You mean like this? So th you can use aluminum tape. Uh, in they use it a lot in duct work. Even Seth's glasses are a blade. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you ever watched an episode of Oz on HBO, David? Uh, that guy that used to kill people with the stems of his glasses. Anyway, so this this is just aluminum tape. It doesn't come in a roll. It comes. It doesn't come like stuck to itself in a roll. It comes as like a giant sticker. So you have to be mindful of that. Uh, so having said that, I would advise against cutting the strips in the length you need and then adhering them because you're going to be peeling them. They're going to tear. It's very thin. You can. It, it's almost like you know that Cadbury egg chocolate wrapper thin. So it's easy to rip it. So what I suggest you do is go to your board. Take a ruler, and from the corner, notch out every two inches. Not one inch, two inches, right? And you can see that I did that, right? Can you see that? I did that. That's every two inches. And the reason I say that is there's no point in doing the one inch increments. Your tape is going to be one inch. So all you have to do is, is nest it to that one inch mark, to that two inch mark, and you're already taking up the two inches. So don't waste your time doing every inch. Plus it'll confuse you a little bit. So what am I gonna do here? Uh, this is one of those ones that I don't do often enough, so I'm probably gonna mess it up pretty heavily. I'm going to do kind of the same method. I'm gonna peel just a little bit and bend, give me a bend, like a starting point. I'm gonna line it up to where I need it to go. I'm gonna eat up a little bit of this roll. It's a little too long. One day I'm gonna do these where they're super, super organized and I'll have a nice flow to them, but then, you know, what's, where's the fun in that? That's the point of doing them live, I don't have to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna peel this back and I'm going to just tack it down with my thumb and as I need it, I'm going to peel off that backing, try to keep it as straight as you can If you're not that handy with it, um, you can do it in little pieces. You know, it's okay if they overlap, it's okay. Oops, see, see how thin it is? Totally breaks. So now I'm gonna do an overlap, like I just told you guys you can do. And there. It's so thin I can just rip it with my fingers. And boom. So now I have an intermittent soft silver. I'm not gonna go down the whole way because it's gonna be boring as fuck. I found a roll of gold, of gold mylar tape while I was looking for an info. Do you think that would work buying a gold version of this? You mean a gold version like this? Whoa, the problem with the gold tape is it costs a lot. Like, if you, as you can see, it comes in a thinner, it comes in uh, thinner rolls. So uh, I kinda don't recommend it. Uh, I will say you can get gold spray paint fairly cheap. I would recommend uh, actual artist grade like Montana spray paints or um, actually I'm going to open the window here really quickly. It's warm and now I have spray glue all over the place. Sorry guys. Give me one second. Ah, beautiful. Love it. Um, so yeah, I would just get artist grade um, gold spray paint and do the, the tape method I just told you guys about. So you have options. I just think that this is too much money. I'd rather just pay for a reflector at that point. So watch yourself with that. They do sell copper and bronze, but, they, but Montana Spray Paint also sells copper, bronze, silver. Um, I think they even sell them that silver now. I don't know. Check out lowbrow underscore NYC on Instagram or lowbrow BK. I forgot what he changed it to. He's the biggest graffiti shop in New York. They'll let you know. Okay, let me check a look at this chat a little bit. Okay, cool. So that is, so what do we cover? We got the white, which is bought, silver, which we just made, right? Black, which is bought, or you could spray paint it black, or you could spray glue down um, pieces of velvet. I really like velvet. It absorbs light really, really well. And if you wanted to, you could do colored velvets like blue, reds, greens, whatever you want, glue it down, and then you have these backgrounds and these boards that uh, absorb light and stay one dense color when you light and shoot them. So it's really unique that way. And having said that, 
if you do a lot of tabletop photography or um, if you get uh, pieces of poster of foam core big enough to make backgrounds for people or something like that, you can do something like this. Let's get a fresh piece out here, right? Really fresh. Ah, it's beautiful. I love it. And let's take a look at what we're going to do now. So you could take, I'm sorry guys, I'm off camera, but you could take things like uh, papers and textiles, right? So I could take a really cool paper like this and make a rigid background so that I can put it behind subjects and shoot with it. Uh, if you light it separately or keep it far away from your little item, they become huge. If you think about it this way, if I was shooting like a four inch figurine, look at the size of this backdrop and compare it to the four inch figurine. And now they're rigid. There's no wrinkles, no nothing, no bends, no rips. It'll stay rigid or I could use it as a floor and shoot it like this and have all this lead in line if I wanted to. Um, when you do choose papers to adhere to, to foam core, watch the density of them and watch the, um, what type of paper there are that absorbs because if you notice on this one, the ink they actually printed with absorbed all the way through, which tells me it's a really thin paper, which tells me this might not be the best paper for me to spray glue because the glue could actually suck into it and change the color of the paper inconsistently. Um, you could give it a shot. I can't guarantee you that it'll work. I actually still have to use this paper for a shoot I'm doing later this week for a still life project. So I'm not going to do this one. But what I am going to do is this one, which is almost the exact size of my board and it's very thick. I should be able to do whatever I want to do with this thing. So what am I going to do? I'm going to do what I did with the foil. I'm going to spray the board. I'm going to spray this and I'm going to let them hang separately for a second and then merge them together. In this case, I don't have to make them perfectly straight because as you can see, there's a little bit of overhang, which is perfect. Will you be putting up this video later? This video will stay up forever. Don't worry about it. Uh, I go live and I just leave them there so you guys can refer back to this. Uh, I would pre-record this and make this really clean, but I am super lazy and I have no equipment to do it with. Uh, and I don't feel like borrowing Daniel's setup. So here it is. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this, you guys can hit up the link in the description for my Shopify account and you can pick up some merch with my photos on them and the money goes towards this channel to help me grow it, like get the equipment I need to do these better. So if you're into these and want to throw some support, please feel free to check out my Shopify and get yourself a t-shirt. I try to keep the pricing as low as I can. Okay, so, oh, hey, Robbie. Uh, thanks so much for all your comments, Robbie, on, the, on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out the uh, Makeup Forever Paris video, I really would appreciate you going over to Adorama TV and checking that out. Um, let's do this. I got, I, this D DIY stuff is kind of fun, actually, for, as far as videos go. I should really uh, look into doing this a little more. Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm going to spray this first. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we'll spray this first. I'm going to take away my soft silver reflector. And then in a minute, we'll take them over to Sheila and we'll see if they actually work. Who knows? I don't know. They might. All right. I'm going to spray this. Again, we're going to shake it. We're going to make sure our dots are lined up. Do a test in the garbage or something like that. Make sure the spray is even. If it spits, I'm telling you, you're going to have a big issue. Let me see. I'm going to do this side. Get rid of this. Apparently, this is called Guardsman Red. The Paris video is very cool. Oh, thank you so much, KCY. Uh, I really appreciate that. That video was a beast of an undertaking. I got to thank Fernando Martinez, Dave Brusca, um, Christina, everybody that was involved. I want to thank Makeup Forever on that one, too. I know I keep thanking people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. By the way, can we just check out my serial killer style? Look at these things. How dope are these? These have appeared in many special effects shoots as a murder weapon. I'm really psyched on these. But now they're kind of covered in spray glue. Shh. All right, let's do this. Even dispersion. I'm doing one line stopping, one line stopping, one line stopping, and I'm overlaying by a, about a quarter of an inch. So every time I go over, it's about a quarter of an inch. Now, if I wanted to, I'd get a little crazier with it and do it this way as well. But you don't want to go heavy. You're using paper. Paper will actually absorb the glue and send it through it. You do not want that if you're using this as a backdrop. I'm going to set this thing down on this garbage can to just let it tack up a little bit. Now we got to work a little faster, right? This is a brand new piece and we're going to do the same thing on this. 
So for all you old analog guys, I think you can relate to this being like, kind of like wet dry mounting almost, right? Like dry mounting used to have sheets of uh, glue that you could heat press into your photo and then it would adhere to a board. So we're kind of doing the same thing just with liquid spray glue. Okay, so I'm gonna let this tack up a little bit. Man, this stuff tastes disgusting. I'm gonna have a great buzz in about 20 minutes, huh? Uh, Gord Smith, oh, thank you so much, Andreas. All right, so now I'm going to be really careful because there's no going back once this goes down. And I'm going to thumb this down just slightly on the edges. And because this isn't foil, I got some leeway. I'm gonna let, again, let the squeegee bring the substrate down to your board. Don't push it down. Let it naturally go down. Now, I have a rigid backdrop. I don't have to worry about mounting it or anything. The longer this stays glued together, um, that sounds kind of, kind of a dog, that kind of, sounds kind of stupid, right? The longer it stays glued together, the longer it stays together. Uh, if you start using these right away, like if you did this like right now and then we go shoot and it's hanging off or it's, ha it's hanging like this or you're clamping it, the more likely it is it's gonna separate. So your best bet is if you need anything like this, do it like the night before, do it a week before, let it sit, let that glue really harden in there. And if I wanted to, because I have all this overlap, what could I do? I could take my blade and I could use this as my guideline and just cut it off if I wanted to. Or you could just do it like this too. Actually, I'm gonna, actually I shouldn't show you guys bad habits. So yeah, just use the edge of the board as your guideline and you get a nice clean edge, okay? And if I wanted to, I could score this and do the same thing I did. What is going on here? I keep losing boards. Ah, oh, sorry guys, I lost it. But that V flat I made, did I throw this somewhere? What happened to it? But if I wanted to, I could score this just like I did that other board and I could make a V flat that just happens to be red, which would also help me get different backgrounds. Like if I, just, if I didn't have a clamp system, I could just use part of the board as the background for a very small, um, make an episode about bad habits with Daniel. If I made an episode about Dan, uh, bad habits with Daniel, he would just list everything I do wrong. So we're just gonna leave that one alone, okay? I'm gonna finish this off because I think I could use a red board for something. I wasn't planning on doing this today, but why not? Any questions out there? I know this was like kind of like a whatever kind of video, but I just wanted to do something today on a lazy Saturday. I had a cancellation, so I wanted to make some use today. I hope you guys got something out of this. Is there anything I didn't do that you think I should have done? Is there something I've, you've ever seen me do with this stuff that you weren't quite sure of? Ugh. Cool. Nice clean edge, see? So, no, well, I guess I should finish, I'll finish this off later. So we got some good stuff done today, huh? We got a silver reflector. I don't know what happened to my little, oh, no, that's not my V-flat. I guess I lost my V-flat, guys. I guess I can make another one really fast though, right? Oh, here it is, here it is, my little V-flat. Or I could score it the other way and make the V-flat so that it folds in with a black background if you wanted a quick, Let's do that, I'm gonna do that really quick. So let's say I want it to fold the other way. This is just common sense, but I want you to, I want to give you a reasoning behind it. So sometimes when you're shooting tabletop, it's, it's really hard to um, make that scene happen when it's that small or light it the way you want it or whatever. So let's say I needed a deep black background for a tabletop photo. Like let's say, hold on, let me get rid of this. Let's say I was shooting this can, I wanted a deep black background, but I'm, I'm limited on how I can light it and stuff like that. So I can just take this, just leave my blade somewhere. Keep, I keep doing this. Yeah. Oh, here it is. So I can do this, I can, this is a 30 inch board, so I'll mark the 15 like I did before. I'll do it with a cut, because I'm gonna cut there anyway. 
right? And then I'll put 15 over here. So let's say I'm shooting uh, that can, right? And I needed a black background, but man, you know, the lighting's gotta be like really fine tuned for it. And you know, it's such a small little thing. And you know, product photography is a beat sometimes if you're not used to it. Um, it can be a lot of fun. It's very, it's up to your pacing sometimes, which is cool. So I'm gonna score this. I'm not gonna cut it all the way. I'm just gonna score it, right? I'm gonna pop this. Now, if I was shooting that can, all I have to do is get it to about here and make sure no light, and this already sucks in. This is the background. It's just absorbing light. There's no actual angle of incidence to create a reflection, and I get a deeper black background really easily just by making a really quick V-flat. You could also use emergency blankets with the gold and silver sides. That's funny you say that because I got a case of those emergency blankets sitting there in my, right in there. Um, I'm not going to use one, but yeah, normally what I use those for is to make reflectors off the ground. So if I didn't want to get a bunch of aluminum foil, I can just drop them to the drop these huge emergency blankets to the ground and shoot my light into the floor and back up, therefore saving me having to waste rolls and rolls of aluminum foil for no reason. Um, this is just a trick for more of a rigid type balance system. Um, but yeah, the emergency blankets is a good one. Let me see, nothing else in the chat? How many of you guys got in there? I got 29 of you guys, wow, okay. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much the Brooklyn Reflector, guys. The, if you're wondering where that name came from, ask Daniel, because when I took over the event space at Adorama, uh, there was no bounce boards and I used to bring in uh, tons of this stuff just because I knew we could all use it. And um, he started pulling it out during live streams and saying, you know, Seth made these in Brooklyn. It's a fun joke, I guess. But he does have the Brooklyn Reflector t-shirt if you guys want to buy something from Daniel's channel. Um, it is a pretty funny shirt, but uh, yeah. The Silver Bounce is a good one to have around. Um, and uh, you know, you're a good teacher, man, thank you. Thank you, Gilbert, I really appreciate that. Uh, so let's get you guys off of this and let's see what these things look like, yeah? Does that sound cool? All right, let me move this. I have, let's take a look. I gotta come over there and get you guys. Hang tight, one second, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you guys, I'm coming. Here we go, here we go. I got gotcha. you, up, up, don't freak out, I got gotcha. you. Okay, now let me unplug. Whoops, okay, so let me, sorry guys, I'm like haphazard at this stuff. Okay, so, whoop, 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 there's power cables everywhere. Okay, so what I have here is, let's do this. I got Sheila, the one and only, the most beautiful, I know, I know, I know you hate, I know, just, just go with it, just go with it. And over here I have a B1X. I'm gonna turn the B1X uh, modeling light on. So I got this right here. I use pattern foil wrapping like this to create background reflections. Yeah, pattern foil is really fun. Oh, I didn't even do that. Oh my God, I'm sorry. <sighs> so a different type of finish for the aluminum foil. You can crumple it up and then lay it down and then you'll end up getting less specular highlights as a reflection because it'll be a beaded reflection. Should I do that one? Tell me now. I'll get into it right now if you want me to do that one, just tell me. If not, I'm just gonna go into using Sheila with the light. So speak now, speak now, speak now. Now you guys are good? Okay. But for future reference, if you just crumple up the aluminum foil before you glue it down to the board, you'll actually get a, uh, a less directive of a reflection, creating a broken up highlight. So yeah, you can use any size aluminum foil you want. You, you know, the, the longer the better, obviously, because it covers it in one shot. But this, I just used standard, whatever this is. You know, the cheaper the foil, the thinner it's gonna be, the more likely it is to rip while you do all this stuff. So be mindful of that. Man, I just, I look like I just woke up, which I kind of just did. All right, let's, um, let's flip this camera around, right? Let's do this. Can I do that? Yep. So there she is. I'm going to go over to, this right here, I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to turn on my modeling light in group B and we should have, nope. Oh, did this go to sleep? Is that what just happened? Uh, let me see. You can get textured. Um, what the hell happened here? Awesome live stream, I know everybody, I know. 
And I'm, and I'm like one-handed here. Is this thing dead? Is that what just happened? Let me just check the battery really quick. Nope, I'm good on battery. Sorry guys, hold on. I'm gonna switch it this way. I had this all set up and then, you know, you go live and everything goes to hell. So let me, okay. Now we're gonna turn on the modeling light. Okay, cool, there we go. So I got this modeling light blazing, right? So I'm gonna take my white Brooklyn reflector and we're just gonna fill in those shadows. Take it away, we see those shadows. White, white bounce, silver bounce, right? Here's the silver. And you can see that I'm actually got a harder punch. You can see the underneath of her eye socket. You see that shake? If you're ever wondering where your bounce is, just shake it, just, just, just shake it a little bit and you can start seeing where it's going, right? Look at that, boom. If I wanted some negative fill, this will be less, You'll, you'll, this is some black. You can actually see the, the shadows get denser, right? Look at that. Look at how dense those shadows get. Now take it away. Dense shadows, take it away. So it's absorbing the residual light. Hell, if I wanted to, we could take this red one we just made. See this red one? And we start getting a red reflection. So it's kind of like a gelled bounce, if I wanted to. You guys have seen me do this on my fill light demo if you're here in New York. If you're not, I'm probably gonna do that one on Facebook one of these days. Red. And just for good measure, let's do this one. And you can see that it's, it's very uneven. It's a weird specularity. But I can get it so that's right in the catch of the eyes and it's kind of like a broken light. Okay, let me take a look at the chat really quick. I'm sorry, guys. How do you keep the aluminum foil so smooth? Patty, if you just check this video, um, the earlier portion of this video, once it's up, you can see how I smoothed it out. Uh, I think I, I did it like once or twice. Um, the lead do-it-yourself Adorama. So the lead gels that they sell that are textured are awesome. Uh, you could just glue those down to a board as well. Pretty much as anything you want to keep rigid, you can glue down to a board. Uh, what I'm saying is if you're in a pinch or if you need an abundance of reflectors, instead of you spending money on like 40, why is this doing this? Did C? see? No. Is it on the channel? Now, nah, whatever. Anyway, um, let me get out of this light. So the, the moral of the story is if you need a lot of bounce, if you need a bunch of these pieces, you can make them really fast and easy. Uh, people have always asked me, and I always thought that it was kind of like, that's kind of weird that people need to know about. I think it's because I hit the sink. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so I think, um, so I think everyone always asks me about those reflectors and really it's just a matter of what type of bounce you're going for. It, it's something you kind of want to know about fill light a lot with. Um, by the way, this is the studio. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, you know, look at the size of these reflectors. And if I needed like multiple points of reflection, that means I'd have to spend a bunch of money on each one of these. It's easy to keep foam core around. It's, it's great when they're rigid. Are they travel friendly? Of course not. I would never take foam core with me, but I could, if I was going on location, I could run to a drugstore really fast and get some bounce board. Um, and I have all these options. I mean, look at all this junk we just did today. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, let me know. If there's anything else you guys have been wondering about, if there's anything I can help you with, I'm down to help you out. I would like to grow this channel. I think it's taken me forever to uh, get this going, but I appreciate all the support. Uh, if you guys want, go to the Shopify link in my, in my description here, and you guys can throw some support. I'm wearing one of the shirts right now, actually. See, it actually has one of these old school macro shots I used to do of fly strips. So this is vintage Seth Miranda right there. Where would we be without foam core? I don't know. I mean, I love foam core. Um, you can actually buy really thick pieces of it, about like an inch or more from places that sell expendables for set work. So if you're in New York, uh, there's plenty of places that could sell you expendables as they call them. Um, they're, they're also called show cards. Formally, they're called show cards if you just want to grab and, and go. 
uh, but you can just make them. You can spend like, a, uh, like an afternoon with a stack of them and just make all the silver and white boards that you want. So I gotta sit down for a second. Sorry, it's been a long, long week. You can see it in my eyes. Please do an extensive video on shutter drag, rear curtain. Oh my God, you guys are obsessed with that shutter drag stuff, huh? I've been doing shutter drag for a really long time. I've been doing ghosting for a really long time. It was a big deal in my BMX and skateboarding days because you need to see the motion in the riders to prove that, the, that it actually happened, that it wasn't a setup. So I took a lot of time and energy to learn exactly what happens with uh, drags and, sh and ghosting and stuff like that. So um, I, it's cool that you guys are into it. It just kind of amazes me that all of a sudden I have like an influx of a ton of people wanting to know how to do ghosting and shutter drag, including Vanessa Joy, by the way. Uh, did any of you guys see my Vanessa Joy live uh, stream when we shot, making her look like creepy and stuff? You're obsessed with it, huh, Robbie? Well, I appreciate that. I'll see what I can do about that. I do have stuff out there. If you go on Adorama's IGTV, I did a shutter drag demo right there on that channel. So it's kind of old, you know? Um, oh, you guys all saw it. Oh, thank you so much. I, 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 I really didn't think I was gonna, what is this? I didn't think I was gonna go live, but I never really go live from the store. I usually only go live on Instagram or on my own channel, but I guess maybe I'll go do that from now on. I'll do my demos on the Facebook. Um, on the Facebook, on Adorama's Facebook. Thank you so much, George, I appreciate that. Uh, again, if you guys wanna throw any support so I can keep this channel going, please check out my merch page on Shopify. I know it's, it sounds like I'm begging, but like, hey, Vanessa Joy. Uh, but I do appreciate anybody out there that's got my signature rocking on them. Look at that, that poor fly. Uh, but there's plenty of other stuff out there. Vanessa Joy has one of my pencil skirts with a cyanotype wrapped around it. If you know what a cyanotype is, you're a photo nerd like me, so go grab one. Um, so just go to the Shopify link in this description or any description pretty much on this channel. Uh, hopefully it's there, I think I put typed in there. Hey, what's up, Jack Death? Uh, if you guys haven't, please check out my Makeup Forever video uh, from Paris on Adorama TV. It was uploaded like a week ago. Please check that out. I might change the thumbnail, see if we can get some better traction. Uh, Mark, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys checking out these streams. I hope this channel grows a little bit. Uh, I hope that my series on Adorama grows a little bit. And I just wanna let you guys know that I've had one amazing year and it's because you guys check all, all of my media and all my content. If you weren't there, I couldn't have the life that I'm having right now. So I really appreciate everything. I'm having a blast doing this stuff. And um, after almost 20 years of doing this, it's kind of fun to just kind of like crack my head open and spill it all over you guys and see what you guys create out of it. Um, this is a community. This is, when I was brought up in this industry, it was because someone thought you were worth spend, investing time into and they showed you things and they had let you work with them and it can still be like that. So I feel like when I have a really close friend like Dave Bruska or Daniel Norton or Vanessa Joy and we can share our viewpoints and our philosophies and our work methods, we can elevate everything about this game. It's not cutthroat. No matter what anybody says out there, it's not about stonewalling people or whatever, it's about community and just creating cool shit. I mean, let's be fucking honest. Every time you guys uh, create something out there, it doesn't mean it's over. We create again and again and again, and there's jobs out there and there's more jobs than ever before for photographers. And I'm, being, I'm learning that real fast. So, um, man, my hair is all crazy today, huh? Uh, so listen, again, I just wanna thank all of you guys for tuning into my channel. I wanna thank all you guys for tuning into everything on Adorama. Me and Daniel greatly appreciate it. Check out all the stuff that me and him do on his channel. Um, and, you know, if you can finish. <laughs> Vanessa joined Dave Brusker talking about uh, coffee in my chat. This is amazing. All right, guys, I think that's it. If there's any last questions or comments, please, please, please let me know right now because I'm about to sign off. We have been going for about an hour, it says. Kind of crazy. I didn't think the stream was going to be an hour long. Um, I think I'm going to order myself a pizza, actually. Patty, we really appreciate Every time you drop comments, it means a lot to us. So thank you so much. I'm glad you're learning some stuff from us. I'm glad you're elevating your own game. Um, let me know what you guys are doing out there. You know, Share some work back. Show us what is coming out of these demos and these live streams and stuff like that. Um, you know, shout us out, share the videos, spread it around, you know? So uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say, man. 
I guess the next time I see you will be Monday. I'll be going live on Adorama's Instagram, and then I'll be on Adorama Rewind, recapping out the news for you guys. Um, check out Dave Bruska's channel. It's fucking awesome. It really is awesome. Uh, his, when I ghost a bride, I'll show you. Vanessa Joy, we have to teach Vanessa Joy a few things about ghosting. She's going to nail it. It's going to be pretty awesome to see some grimy lighting with a beautiful bride. We'll see what happens. Uh, am I making you guys seasick yet? I know, i got to get a stabilizer. I'm using the worst equipment for this shit ever. I apologize. I will be upgrading my equipment. So, um, But hey, if you guys buy some shirts, maybe I'll upgrade my equipment faster. What? <laughs> All right. Uh, what time is it? Okay, I gotta start packing out of here and scrape all the glue off my glasses. Uh, thank you guys so much. Drop a comment, hit like, share my page around, buy a shirt, go check out everything else. Check out my Paris video for Makeup Forever on Adorama TV. I am out of here. Thank you guys so much. Let me figure out how to shut this off. I think it's this thing right here. Mm, just use Norton's gear? I could, I actually could. He did offer it. Um, it's just one of the systems he uses is the one I don't really know how to use. So I don't want to mess with that. I'm going to buy myself uh, my own thing. All right. Holy fuck. This has been some year, let me tell you. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Hit up my link in the, in the caption with my online store. Later. Mm -hmm.